All right, everyone. Well, welcome back. And uh, it is a true honor for us as we are joined by one of the greatest coaches in the game, Mike Winklejohn. So, Mike, look, thank you very much for joining us today. So, look, getting straight into it, I wanted to ask you that as martial arts itself progresses so quickly, as a coach, do you find that you also have to evolve along with the sport? Or do you find that you have tried and trusted methods that you know work well in increasing the development of fighters under your tutelage? Well, there's no doubt the basics are the same, um, getting guys going. And uh, at the higher level, the strategies, of course, um, play out differently. But, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, we all have to evolve. It's, it's constantly changing. Things that worked for us in the past, um, people have the answer to and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, um, absolutely just changing nonstop. But the majority of work is really getting people prepared and getting to that spot where they can learn these higher level techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of half and half to answer your question. Yeah. Coach, um, someone I wanted to, to bring up to you is Cl Clarissa Shields. Now, I've said this from the beginning, from when she first announced she was going to head over to, to MMA and give it, a, give it a crack, was with the right training, I truly believe she can be a world champion in any organization. She's so young, so incredibly talented, and the best, you know, in my opinion, best female boxer in the world right now. I know she has a world title fight um, in London next month, I believe, but do you know of, of any plans for Clarissa to, to return to MMA in the near future? Well, I, I, my last conversation with, with her was that she wanted to get back in and she, she wanted to come in and do a little bit of training. Um, you know, she's sitting there watching, um, you know, Kayla fight, for instance, in the PFL. And she's like, no, we can beat her. And I, and, and I was thinking, I know you can beat her. We just have to get back to work. She's got to work on her ground game. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. um, that young lady's just busy. She wants to box. And it's, it's hard uh, to go off two sports at one time. There's only so many hours in the day. Um, I know that's in her heart that she wants to get back into it. So, um, we'll see what happens after she gets done with this, this, uh, this fight, uh, and gets a, vict a victory there. Um, I I'm hoping she'll be back in the gym working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So Mike, look, you have extensive kickboxing experience on top of your already legendary career as a coach in MMA. Do you ever think that kickboxing can reach that sort of mainstream popularity that MMA has really started to sort of crack into? I think it's an uphill battle. You know, back in the back in the day, I was always surprised it didn't get bigger. Of course, we all that were you know fighting all the time for the, the small amount of money wanted to get mm -hmm. big. Um, and it's funny because people like to stand up so much in MMA. That's where the excitement's at. When, when the yeah. grounds hit, when fighters hit the ground, people have a tendency to boo. They don't understand the big chess game going on down there. Yeah. Uh, but I, don't, I honestly don't think so. I think the thing about MMA is is because there's so many different ways to win. And there's not enough hours in the day for anybody to become an expert at everything. So you never know what you're going to get. You know, there's always a guy that can just, he can beat the stand-up guy on the ground. There's a stand-up guy that's going to catch the ground guy coming in and, and defend and, and, and make him eat, eat his punches and kicks. Or, you know, some guy that just is incredible at attacking, you know, knees and ankles or whatever the case is. And so um, I think that's what makes the sport fun is, mm -hmm. uh, is the controlled chaos that's happening right in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mike, um... Obviously, one of the mainstay uh, students of, of, of Jackson Wing for many, many years has been the great former Bantamweight champion, Holly Holm. And I actually wanted to ask you, I, you know, I had her winning that fight against Ketlin Vieira. I, I, I did think she won that fight. Um, now, since, since, that, since that fight, there hasn't been much about, you know, when she's returning. Is there any plans, do you think, for, for Holly to get back in there soon? Well, Holly had a, a serious injury before that fight, uh, and she still won that fight. I thought she dominated yeah. that fight. But with that being said, uh, she had to take care of that injury. And uh, now she's mending it, and she wants to get back. I, I'm thinking really early next year she's she's back at it. Um, and uh, all I can say is Holly keeps getting better and better. You know, she's mm -hmm. she's getting up there in age, but it's, it's really wild because in the gym she just runs everybody out of gas, and she's uh, a true workaholic. She she runs like nobody else. She's constantly working out and dedicated like nobody else. So mm -hmm. she'll be back. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, Mike, look, in your opinion, how much do you think a coach should be on their student if they're preparing for a fight in regards to training consistently, dieting, and recovering correctly? Or do you feel that that is a level of responsibility that the athlete has to completely take for themselves? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. They have to grow up and do it themselves or else they'll never be able to do it when you're not there or when something changes. Um, it's like life skills. And uh, the only way I think they succeed is the, the willingness to become becoming the adult and, and become the professional. So they have to train. They have to figure out their diet. They have to do things right. There's no reason why someone has to yell, har harp at them. Um, we can hit them up. We can, we can prod them. We can push them. But at the end of the day, it's on the athlete just to, to grow up and become a professional if that's what they really want to do. Mm -hmm. Mike, um, 
following up on on, uh, on on the on the conversation about Holly, I've I've heard um, Matchroom promoter Eddie Hearn sort of mentioned recently about Holly's name. Um, you know, in, in a boxing boxing ring back, you know, back in a boxing ring and, and his interest to so to sort of bring her back over. Do you think that would ever interest Holly to ever return um to boxing or do you think her main focus sort of for the back end of her career is just solely MMA? Oh no, she uh, you know, the the last boxing match where my goal was for her to to uh, win that last fight and then talk to Dana White and say, guys, mm-hmm. you guys should be co promoting something with 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 Eddie Hearn and see if we can't mm-hmm. put together this boxing match. Cause I wanted Holly my goal was for Holly to get the world title in UFC again, but also at the same time go beat up Kid Taylor and, and win the mm-hmm. boxing world title. Because yep. Holly has the world titles in boxing, like she's mm-hmm. done in MMA. Nobody else has done that. But at the same time, she won up that one and have them both at the same time. So that that was my goal. It didn't work out the way I thought because the judges, I don't know what they were watching. Um, but with that being said, um, Holly is interested in boxing. Um, she has a little bit of a she 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 didn't want to box for a while, but. Uh, she got kind of excited just recently about boxing. So who knows what the future will bring. Yeah. Mm. So Mike, as a coach who has been entrenched in the game for so long, does it excite you knowing that there is currently a generation of young fighters coming up who started off in and have been training MMA since they were, you know, 12, 13 years old, as opposed to sort of, you know, the previous generation where a lot of guys and girls started off in one specific aspect of the sport and then sort of transferred over. Oh yeah. It's a, uh, I wish I say exciting. It's a, uh, it's there. It's smack uh, dab in our face. I can see mm-hmm. it when we surf. The first had guys. <clears throat> we had guys that came in a great wrestler. So I uh, said, so look, we got to spend a lot of time on striking. We had guys mm-hmm. that came in a great striker. We got to spend a lot of time on their grappling and wrestling skills. Now I got kids in the gym that are 19, 20 years old that honestly I believe are better than some of the who's who's from the past. Mm-hmm. That's how far the sports come, how much better everybody's gotten. Um, the technology's got better. Everybody's learning. Everybody's seeing what everybody else is doing. They're learning faster and faster ways to beat things. And uh, it's 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 quite exciting, and uh, it, it's it's crazy all at the same time. So um, all I know is they're getting they're, they're also getting bigger, stronger, faster. As I'm getting older, mm-hmm. shorter, and weaker, it's really <laughs> irritating the heck out of me. But uh, uh, no, it's exciting. It, it's 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 day to day learning new things, and and like I'll walk out of my mat now because we have a who's well, we have, we have people from around the world, and mm-hmm. so I'm so blessed because I have like this gigantic laboratory, and and people are always doing new things, and I can throw something out there, or Greg can throw something out there. And then people start trying to do it. Then all of a sudden, this guy from um, Mongolia or whatever the case is does something different. You go, wait, 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 wait. Do that again. <laughs> hey, guys, what I said, don't do what I said. Do what that, what that young man just did. It's, yeah. it's the coolest yeah. thing ever. We learn new things all the time. So, mm. uh, um, And that's what I like about it, the, the big laboratory and, and the fact that it's always evolving and, and we're finding better ways. Yeah, 100%. Coach, um, I know you've had so many moments in your career that would stand out as, as being the, the proudest. I mean, I can imagine one would be being here in Australia and seeing Holly defeat Ronda many years, many, many years ago. But I'd love to know, is there a moment um, specifically that stands out for you that you can recognize and, and go, that that is my proudest moment of your coaching career? Oh, well, you nailed it. It was Holly. Holly, Holly I, I won't lie. Holly's my favorite. And she uh, uh, taking that Ronda, that Ronda that just shocked mm-hmm. the world. You know, I was pretty confident we could do it too because of the fact that Rhonda was kind of a uh, she had some tricks up her sleeves and she was so dang good at them, but she only had those tricks. So yeah. if we take her out of her comfort zone a little bit, attack her at her comfort zone, um, and it worked out really well. And uh, no, that that was yeah by far the best. I, mean, I had some really good ones, but uh, that one stands out. Mm, for sure. So, Coach, look, we have a mammoth lightweight title fight on the horizon with Charles Oliveira and Islam Mahachev. Um, how do you see that fight going down as I personally have Charles Oliveira taking that? You know what? Oliveira is just as tough as they come. It's his body work that I that mm. I like so well. Again, uh, Mahachev, I, I, I apologize if I'm saying his name wrong. You know what? He's uh, he's so good at what he does. There's no mm. doubt about it. Um, it's going to be one of those things that who can impose their will and make it mm. happen. Um I'm leaning toward Oliveira. There's no doubt about it, and only because experience and uh, that 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 man. I, I believe he just. I, I, when I see it, I see him tear down people's bodies, and he keeps coming, keeps coming. Uh, the kicks and the knees to the body are just make a big difference to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Coach. Look, this is the last question from us. We don't keep you too long because we, uh, we we value your time very much. So, last last little question from us, my, uh, Coach, is um. What, what you and Greg Jackson have built um, over at Jackson Wink is, is truly incredible. You, 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 in my, you guys, in my opinion, have, have the most well-known, well-renowned gym in the world. And that is a huge credit you know, to the both of you for your, your hard work over the years. And, you know, I wanted to know, is, is there sort of a time limit on your coaching career or is it more of a case of where as long as you're healthy and 
you know, feeling physically healthy and mentally healthy, you'll continue to coach. Yeah, there's a limit on it. There's no doubt about it. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit 60 here really soon. Um, in a blink of an eye. It was just like yesterday I was younger, but, uh, um, I used to do a lot more hours to the guys in the cage. I used to do so much more with them, and I'm, I had to pull myself back a little bit as, as I've gotten older. And like I said, they keep getting bigger and stronger. So it, being as active as I am, I used to run private classes all day long. I mean, we'd, I'd do two group classes, and then I'd be running, you know, like nine or ten private sessions with these guys, holding mitts and doing whatever, and trying to be their partners. And uh, I've slowed down quite a bit over the years, um, and I see it slowing down more. But with that being said, um, I know it's in my head, and I, I we got a good group of guys that are helping us out. I have a, another coach, Joy Villasenor, who's just stepping up, become one of the best coaches I've ever seen, and and I'm sure you guys know him. He fought in pride and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but so I think it's just one of those things you have to kind of just hand off the torch a little bit, and uh, and I'll, I'll be sitting back from afar watching it. I got a, probably two or three more good years in me, and then I think it's time to uh, spend a little bit more time on the beach, hopefully. Um, Andy um, Dufresne. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't know, you know, but I, I, am always in the gym. I love it. it it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's, I don't want to explain it. It's kind of one of those places that it's peaceful because mm. it's violent in, in a way, but it's peaceful in a way. Cause guys come in, they can let all these distractions in life mm. and I can let all the distractions in life go away and we can just do what we do. And it doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if uh, it's Christians or Muslims or Buddhists or atheists or black guys or white guys or, or Chinese people or Mongolians and they beat each other up. And afterwards, you know what? They shake hands. They talk about their families. They talk about their dreams, their aspirations. And there's no better place to be when that happens. Yeah, 100%. Well, look, Coach, I almost want to say a massive thank you. I know we're just two guys in Australia. And, and for you to give us some time, it, it truly means the world to us. I mean, I've been watching, and I can say for Alex as well, he's been, we're, we've both been watching the UFC and, and MMA since you know, about 2009, 2010. We have known you since then, basically watching you on TV and watching you coach. So, to get to chat to you today and get your insight on a few things, it is it is really amazing and a true honor for us. And we would love to have you on um, on the show again in the future. All right, guys, uh, you're more welcome. Thanks for having me, and we'll 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 see you down under there sometime soon. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Coach. See you later.